Good evening and welcome to the August 25th meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, would you take a roll call, please? You're going to have to help me with your last name, Susan. Oglis. Og Mrs. Oglis? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Help with your last name, Buffard. Mr. Buffard? Here. Mr. Paul? Here. Mr. Chase? Here. But we don't have to do me. Don't have to do you? Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Um, how do you pronounce your last name, sir? Mine. No, his right here in the purple. Mason? Fellows. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, Fellows. Okay, Mr. Fellows? I'm here. Mr. DuPont? Yep. Yeah. And Mr. Mazer? Here. Yeah. We're all here. Um, <clears throat> we have a full board tonight, which is yeah. nice. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I would like to start this Thank evening you. and start off by introducing our new recording secretary, Karen Patterson. Hi, Karen. Who is coming in and joining us and is uh, baptism by fire this evening. <laughs> so this is, I think, one of her first official duties. Um, in her new role. So we welcome you. Thank you. And um, please slow us down if you need to. If there's anything that you need, just ask, sure. and we'll be glad to clarify. So we'll kick off with item number three this evening, approval of minutes of August 4th, 2014. I move to approve. Second. We have a second from Mr. Mazur. Is there any discussion? I was not at the last meeting, so... All right. Neither, all right. Neither was I. And neither was, okay, Mr. DuPont. So neither, all in favor? Neither was I. And neither was he. So there were four of us here. Right. All in favor, and I'm assuming we have how many abstentions? Three abstentions? Correct. Okay. So that would be that vote. No opposed. Our next item this evening is a consent item, Leighton Farm Subdivision Phase 1. Leighton Farm LLC requests a final subdivision approval for 24 single family lots off Elmwood Ad in the R2 zone. Uh, Mr. Chase. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As noted, this is a consent item. Uh, essentially, that means the board has reviewed this item on a number of occasions, uh, going back to a preliminary approval earlier in the summer at your last meeting, I believe it was off the fourth board began the review of a final approval. There were still a few outstanding items, uh, particularly the DEP permit, which has been issued, and we do have a copy of that on file. Um, and there were a few outstanding uh, engineering questions that have also been resolved. So at this point, uh, staff has prepared a motion for the board. If the board has no further concerns, uh, based on your previous discussions, then um, it is on for a consent item. Great. I recognize it's a consent, but the applicant is here. If there's any comments that you would like to make, I'd be feel free to do so. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're just uh, here to answer any questions in case there were any from the board and tonight. And get your paper signed. All right. And to get my paper signed. <laughs> and to get your paper signed. Right. All right. Thanks, Sean. Um, <clears throat> before uh, I turn this over to the board, I would like to uh, um, extend uh, the board's sympathy to the Mayetta family this evening. Um, we recognize it's a very difficult time for them, and we just want you to know that we are thinking of that and reach out and say so. So best of luck to your family. We have an item on as a consent item. Is there any questions or concerns from the board? I'll start with Mr. Mazur. I'm okay. Okay. John? Okay. Corey? Nothing Dave? to add. Nick? I think That's we're good. I will move on. Item. So I move to approve the application of Leighton Farm LLC under Chapter 406, the Town of Scarborough Subdivision Ordinance, for the final subdivision plan of Leighton Farm Subdivision Phase 1 with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes a 24-lot residential subdivision with access off Elmwood Avenue. The residential subdivision is located within the residential R2 zoning district and has been designed in accordance with the conservation subdivision design standards as a conservation subdivision. 
The planning board finds that the subdivision meets the required conservation subdivision design standards with residential lots designed to meet the space and bulk regulations of section 7A and with excess of 50% open space principally designed to conserve wetlands and natural areas. The planning board has reviewed the applicant's proposed plan and related materials as submitted and finds that the final subdivision plan meets the performance standards of section four and six of the subdivision ordinance with the following conditions. The subdivision shall be constructed in accordance with the subdivision plans entitled Leighton Farm Subdivision Phase One, as prepared by Sebago Technics dated 8-11-14. The detail sheets are to be revised to in accordance with the comments raised by Jim Wendell, revised detail sheets to be reviewed and approved by planning staff. Number two, the total traffic impact assessments of the projects are as follows. Oak Hill, $6,040. Dunstan, $5,608. Higus, $6,930. Payne Road, Zone 2, $584.84 and Zone 3, $499.05. A proportional amount of the total fee shall be paid prior to the issuance of each building permit. The proportional amount required is $904.61. Number three, prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the town's post-construction stormwater management infrastructure management ordinance. A recreation contribution in the amount of $500 shall be paid on a lot-by-lot -lot basis prior to the issuance of a building permit. Prior to the start of construction, the no, no disturbed wetland setback areas shall be cleared, clearly delineated in coordination with town staff. Is there a second? I second that. Mr. Mazur seconds, thank you. Is there any board discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? I show that to be unanimous. Uh, for the record, um, both um, Nick and Susan are alternates this evening. So yep. that would be the reason why they are not in the voting piece of this. So that is it. Good evening and thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I just have a question. Yeah. Uh, Vinny, just curious, uh, do you plan on starting this year or next spring? Yes, I'm uh, Vinny Maeda from uh, Leighton Farm LLC. Yeah, we, we hope to have it's, it's our fantasy to have a base coat off top down before the plants close, so we're, we're real excited to get started as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Dave. Our next item this evening, uh, Transport Leasing Corp requests an advisory opinion to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a miscellaneous appeal to convert a non-conforming use to another non-conforming use in the B3 zone at 103 Muzzy Road. Mr. Chair, I, yes. need to, I need to excuse myself from this deliberation. All right. Uh, my current employer is a competitor of the possible tenant, so I need to step aside. All right. Thank you. Can I ask a clarifying question before we get going? Just want to confirm that this is just about sending it to the ZBA. This is this is if, a if an we, advisory, advisory opinion it works, that we, we send yes, to the ZBA. And the ZBA sends it back here, and we get involved with the nitty gritty. That is correct if it, if it goes to a... Right, but all I'm saying is I don't have to worry about, you know, any of the site plan stuff. The site plan no. items will come back to the yep. board. I, I kind of knew that, but I wanted to make sure it was in the record. Yep. Yes, good no, we're, we're dealing with conforming use, to con a non-conforming use to a non-conforming use. Right, thank And you. the items surrounding that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Mr. Chase. Would you like to introduce that? I will introduce it and to maybe touch on a little bit of Susan's question. Um, so there is a provision in the zoning ordinance that allows one non-conforming use of land or buildings to be converted to another non-conforming use through a miscellaneous appeal process uh, by the Board of Appeals. 
the applicant is seeking uh, to use the appeal provision in the ordinance to convert the use of the property on Muzzy Road uh, basically from a trailer container material storage site to a heavy equipment rental business and facility. Um, as we just discussed, it is before the board tonight for an advisory opinion on the miscellaneous appeals component of the ordinance. Really taking a look at principally does the use, the compatibility of the use with the neighborhood is really what the, the provisions of the, of the miscellaneous appeal are about. Should it get approval um, from the Board of Appeals, it would ultimately come back to this board for a site plan review in which we get into a lot of the more specific criteria regarding landscaping, lighting, traffic, uh, commercial design standards, and all those other elements. So um, again, I think that was, uh, we touched on that at the, at the outset and just wanted to touch on that again. Um, with that, in our staff review comments, we did provide the board with some thoughts and considerations that you might want to take into account when making a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, as they deliberate on the uh, uh, miscellaneous appeal uh, that will be going forward to them. But again, as noted, at this time it is uh, simply an advisory opinion from the Planning Board to the Zoning Board. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. All right, great. Thank you, Mr. Chase. Is the applicant here? Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Let's scoot this just a little bit if that, so I can actually see the full board. Thank you. I'm Brian Rayback. Uh, I'm a land use lawyer with Pierce Atwood. I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant transport leasing. I'm joined tonight by Mark Sanborn, one of the owners, and Steve Bushy, the project engineer, who's here in the red. Um, as you've already covered, the, um, the purpose of the application is really to convert from an existing legally non-conforming use, otherwise known as a grandfathered use, to another non-conforming use. Under the zoning ordinance, this is styled as a miscellaneous appeal. Doesn't really feel like a normal appeal. We're not challenging a decision of the town here, really. Um, but that, that's how the ordinance classifies these. And so this is really a, a zoning board of appeals decision. Uh, but the process does require that we stop here first in front of the planning board for an advisory opinion. Uh, the standards are set out in the staff memo as, as Mr. Chase said, they really get to, does this fit within the neighborhood? The first standard is that um, the, the effect of the conversion of use, so going from one use to another, won't be substantially different from what's existing. And then the other is that we meet the requirements for special exception uses, and there's a whole series of those in your ordinance that, again, get to those sort of neighborhood uh, aspects of a project. Um, the existing site is located at 103 Mussey Road. It's just over four acres. Uh, it was recently rezoned from industrial to B3, which is the general business district. And it really sits on the border of the industrial district. Let's see if I can point that out here. So we're here now. Um, Mussey Road runs here. Uh, as you can see, I don't know how well you can see this from where you are, but Walmart is here, for example. The site was permitted in 2006 for a container and trailer storage <coughs> operation, and it's still operated as such. Uh, when that was permitted, the, that kind of use was a permitted use because it was still in the industrial zone. That became legally non-conforming when the property was rezoned <coughs> to B3. The site is currently uh, largely cleared with a metal gate. Uh, there's a dirt parking area or storage area. Uh, it is not currently developed with a building. Uh, but it has been used regularly over the years for uh, containers, trailers, occasionally storage piles. Um, it's been a staging area for some construction projects as examples. It's a little more than 1,000 feet from this site over to the Gallery Boulevard entrance. And as you come around that corner into Gallery Boulevard, 
Uh, Lowe's is very close. Um, there's a house across the street that uh, we're a little uncertain the use of it. It's fallen into disrepair. We think it's being used now as a commercial business with a small fleet of vehicles. Uh, to the south, uh, there are some residential structures at the end of Nielsen Road, which is separated by a wooded buffer uh, from our site. To the east, uh, there's a farm field and there's an industrial park off of Postal Service Way. And then to the west, the, the initial parcel next to us to the west is undeveloped, but then there are some commercial businesses, uh, including a motorcycle repair shop. So um, as we're looking uh, in this direction, I mentioned the industrial park off of Postal Service is over here. Um, this is the farm field that's next to us uh, to the east. There are a couple of houses way back here at the end of this road called Nielsen Road, uh, and that is separated by a relatively uh, uh, good buffer there. Um, and then the other businesses are down this way, here and here are the other commercial businesses. Lowe's is across the street, so you can see it's quite close. And there is a little house tucked in here. This is the one that, that has fallen into a bit of disrepair. We're a little unsure what, it, what it's being used for now. So the proposal is to develop the site and lease it to an equipment rental business. Um, an equipment rental business is a non-conforming use in B3 according to staff, um, and so that's why we need to, permission to convert from one non-conforming use to another. Uh, we've provided a sketch plan as part of our application materials, and it's on the back of this board as well. This is a preliminary development plan. Uh, if approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals, we will, as Mr. Chase mentioned, we will be back to you with a more detailed site plan, something that, frankly, this board is more accustomed to seeing. We have not yet done all of our engineering. Uh, first, we need to figure out whether the use can be allowed or not before we spend time, time doing you know, traffic counts and stormwater calculations and the like. Once again, we'd have an entrance off of Mussey Road, just the same as it is today. Um, there would be a new building located centrally on the property with parking and display areas out front and a gated yard for storage on either side and to the rear. We expect there would be a stormwater pond at the back of the property. Uh, the facility would be used primarily to rent, sell, and service heavy and light equipment, primarily to homeowners and contractors. Uh, this is the kind of service or uh, rental place that rents things like generators and excavators and air compressors and power washers, those kinds of things that, that both you know, do-it-yourself homeowners use and contractors use from time to time. We really expect that the impacts to the neighborhood will be minimal. Um, the nature of this use, this equipment rental, uh, isn't particularly industrial, or at least it's not as heavy industrial as uh, what, what I would normally think of as an industrial use. There's no heavy um, you know, equipment and machinery working inside this building 24-7. Uh, you know, they don't have a lot of product coming in and out, for example. Um, interestingly, just nearby, if it were still a, in the industrial zone, it would be a permitted use, so we're not that far from where it would be permitted. Um, the immediately surrounding property is, is largely undeveloped or protected by some vegetated buffers. Um, it's also in keeping with other nearby uh, operations, the motorcycle repair business, for example. I think particularly Lowe's is a complementary use. Lowe's already has pretty extensive outdoor storage areas and probably draws a lot of the same types of customers as what would come to this facility. Um, there will be some increase in traffic, um, but we don't expect that a traffic movement permit would be required. Um, and uh, I think that increase in traffic is going to be comparatively limited, relatively limited to the existing traffic in the area. Uh, we've provided for some buffers already. Uh, the setback from, the, from Mussey Road at the front of the building is beyond the, the 35 foot standard for the zone. Um, we're showing some significant buffers to the sides and to the rear. 
Uh, the idea there, obviously, is to help minimize the impacts to neighbors from things like lighting or noise uh, or aesthetic aspects of the development. Um, they plan to operate from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., so relatively normal business hours. Um, there would not be traffic or significant noise, I don't expect, in the, you know, the late evening, very early mornings. Um, with that, we have set out in the application how we think we meet all of the various standards. There are quite a few of those. And uh, what I think I'll do, Mr. Chair, is, is turn it back to you and ask if there are questions. I'm happy to go through those one by one if you think that's useful. Or you know, it's already in the packet, and you, you may feel comfortable with it already. All right. Thank you. I'm also, I also have available our technical expert and our, and our owner as well. OK. Oh, appreciate that. Um, before I do turn this over to the board, there is an opportunity for public comment on this item. Um, <clears throat> we do offer public comment when items come in front of us um, so that to give the public a chance to speak. If there's anybody who would like to do so, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, and we ask that you try to keep your comments to five minutes or less. Seeing none, I'll turn it over to the board. Um, John's, John's not there, I see. Mr. Fellows. Thank you. Um, question for the applicant's representative. And it might be better answered by the, the uh, owner himself, but I'm curious about um, sort of the level of vehicle or equipment turnover or material turnover at the site currently, or at least in, in recent years. I mean, I've, I've been by there. I'm generally familiar with what it looks like, it's sort of, you know, piles of things and containers. I'm curious about sort of the, the frequency of vehicles in and out of there right now, just to, to have a frame of reference for what would be more of a retail type use. Sure. Mark, do you, is that something you can answer? Mark Sanborn, owner. Um, what we had, ABCO Rental and Storage is one of our adjunct businesses. Uh, we bring mobile storage containers to people's houses and businesses where you can store um, product inside or whatever overflow material you have. Um, so we were using that yard extensively from 2006 to uh, 2009 as our main yard. Um, after that, we, we developed over at 95 Pleasant Hill Road, and we were using both yards. We were using uh, the Muzzy Road for the trailers. And the only reason we took the trailers off the property, to be honest with you, was because of the damage that was occurring to the trailers at night. It was kids coming in and graffiti in the side of the trailers. And it just became too expensive for us, no matter what we asked for coverage or to keep it. So that's the, we pulled it off. And at that point in time, we got requests from uh, different contractors doing water work for the town. And we said we'd be more than happy to let you use it. Uh, but we still have intention to uh, keep some trailers there until the product, I mean, the project goes. Did that answer your question, yes. sir? Um, I don't think I really have any other questions at this point. I'll be curious to hear um, the rest of the board discussion. I think um, conceptually I'm, I'm okay with this. I mean, it's a, it is a, a different use and a, a different, a, a sort of a different nature when you're talking about having, as I said, a little bit more of a retail type use. But I agree with the applicant that it, it's uh, generally consistent and with and complementary to other uses in that area and in abutting areas. If you go a little bit further down Fuzzy Road, there actually is another sort of complex where that includes some vehicle rental and so forth. And um, I think there's something to be said too for the potential of having this property um, presumably have some landscaping and a little bit more of a, of a presence and maybe end up hopefully being a little more um, attractive as a, you know, in that in that corridor, not disparaging the useful function that it's been serving, but 
Um, again, as has been pointed out, the board would have the opportunity <coughs> to get into site planning details if and when it does come back. So um, I think on balance, I'm, I'm okay with this. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Mr. Buffard. Thank you. Uh, my first question is for staff. Jay, um, why was this changed to B3 in the first place from industrial? Um, yeah, that was probably going on three or four years ago at this point. Uh, I believe the Long Range Planning Committee, which I believe at that time was probably still the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee, uh, reviewed the area and I think this property really sat at the transition zone between the industrial and what was identified as being sort of a the transition to a more of a retail um, the allowances in the B3 less about what the industrial uh, activities uh, would typically allow so I think that it was in keeping with what the comprehensive plan had called for the property um, so, that's so this could have gone either way right it's, it's kind of I think as the map shows, I think the next, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, you're, the next right. property right abutting you is industrial district. Right. So you, yeah. this, this is the property right on the line. So yes, I would say That's this, right. is, this is the transition yeah. property, if you will. Okay. Um, All right. That's what I suspected. Yep. Uh, can you give me an example of the largest equipment type that would be rented? W would there be any motorized vehicles? Yeah, some of the equipment may have motors to them. You know, an aerial lift, for example, would have its own motor that could be driven on and off of a of a site or off of a, a flatbed truck. Um, so there are those kinds of things. We're not exactly certain precisely what would be available for rent because that's going to be the tenant who right. operates the site. But it's it's that in nature. I mean, there there will be some. No things that or no, there would not be tractor trailers for rent. They would, but there could be some heavy equipment that comes in to to if you're hauling an aerial lift off site, for example, you need a pretty decent sized truck to get it in and out. Just but, wanted, just wanted a mental picture there. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think this would be an improvement over what's there now. Uh, no offense, but. Okay. We think so too. <laughs> we think it would be better. And as far as traffic, uh, I don't see any issues with traffic. It's a straight road. Visibility is very good. So uh, I'm in favor of this. All right. Thanks, Dave. Mr. McGee. And I agree with what uh, my colleagues have said. And, um, you know, it sounds like with a retail store there, we would be seeing some curb appeal improvements. And um, the use as it what you're proposing doesn't sound far out from what it's currently being used for and what's next door. So, again, I have generally positive feelings about this. All right. Thanks, Nick. Ms. Aguas? <coughs> I don't have any serious problems <coughs> with um, the proposed use, but I want to make sure <coughs> that the applicant knows that the size of the equipment coming in and going out, whether it's to be rented or to be delivered, delivering or picking up or whatever is important. This is not, a, it, this is, it wasn't intended to be industrial. So if it's going to be industrial, let's not make it heavy industrial, if that makes any sense at all. Okay? I'm very concerned about noise. Um, I live on Black Point Road, and it's amazing the number of vehicles who, when they are coming down Black Point Road and they're getting ready to turn into a construction site, will use their engines as their brakes. And I would like to discourage that kind of thing, you know. I mean, we'll talk about all of this when it, if and when it comes back to us, but these are the kinds of things I'd like the applicant to be thinking about, is that it not be Pleasant Hill Road, because you are on the, on the line of where we intended for this not to be happening. Um, just be aware that the visual lighting and the noise impacts and so on are going to be really important to us when you come back. Landscaping was mentioned. That will be important to us, too. Um, I'm a little concerned about the um, impact on the folks at the end of Nielsen Road. So that whole setback thing and the setback of the VR2 and the buffering of the stormwater, that's all stuff we're going to take a real heavy look at. Um, I'm a little concerned also about what you mean by outside storage, but 
again, we'll have another look at that. I'm just using this as an opportunity to run through the kinds of things that if you come back here, we don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste our time. We view this as sort of a, it's almost like a sketch plan okay. meeting, That's so good. the feedback That's I good. think is very useful. Okay. Um, fencing and gating. And again, the adequate buffering on all four sides, I think I mentioned that, um, and the engine noise I mentioned. Um, I think this is going to require more of an effort on the part of the applicant than would be in a full industrial zone. And, one of, and I was on the, plant, the committee that recommended that this become a transition area. So if we're going to make it um, non-conforming by allowing industri industrial in there, that's fine, but we're going to be very careful that it doesn't deteriorate into something that is more than what we really expected if that makes any sense, okay? So I, I, I would say fine, let's go see what happens. All right, thank you, Susan. Mr. Mazur. Yeah, I have a whole different perspective. I think this is gonna be a good project. I had an office on the other end of Marcy at one time, so I'm very familiar with the area, and uh, I don't see any problem with traffic, and it's certainly not a residential area by any stretch of the imagination, and uh, I see that particular area uh, as uh, I, the, the project as an improvement for the for the area, it's already all mostly I'll uh, use late terms business anyway, uh, and that down in Mesy Road. So um, yeah, I look forward to the specifics, but I think that in the when push comes to shove, it's it's going to be a big improvement for what's already there, and uh, hope to have a better security system though. Uh, <laughs> If and when, if, if if you had the problem with the the graffiti, and uh, maybe it'll put an end to it uh, when in the final analysis. So I see it as an improvement. I mean, that to me is already an industrial. <coughs> we can get down, bogged down, and in, in left, right here, and uh, industrial business area anyway. So I'm very much in favor of it. Okay, thanks, Ron. Um, yeah. I, I, going back to Dave's question earlier about the change in the space, I as well was sitting on what I believe was the uh, Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee at the time, and I'm pretty sure that that piece of property was kind of like an outlier piece of property, and it was kind of, you know, sticking out like the heel of a boot almost. Um, and that was the primary reason why we brought it back into the B3, especially with uh, the residential area out behind, um, which is kind of like an unusual transition into the industrial zone, but just based on what had been there for a while. So um, certainly I think that this, um, this type of business that we're hearing about, I think lends itself to uh, the neighborhood, if you will. Um, and certainly I don't see any particular um, uh, issues at this time that would prevent me from wanting to rep, um, to provide a positive um, report back to the ZBA. <clears throat> there are going to be some, a lot more review mm -hmm. when you come back to the planning board. Um, but I must say, I think that the number one thing that concerns me, based on what I've seen so far, is the fact that this piece of property is actually part of the aquifer protection overlay. Mm -hmm. And based on the type of equipment and type of business that's going to be run here, there's going to be a fair amount of gasoline being added into small engines and larger engines, et cetera. Um, and our ability to be able to control any kind of fueling and or oil changing that is going to be going on at this facility is going to be huge. Um, having sat through some um, information meetings regarding how quickly and how little is required uh, to infiltrate down into the aquifer, especially given Scarborough's sandy soil conditions. Um, that, that, I think, is really one of the <coughs> most critical issues that I would like to see the applicant address when they come back in front of this board. It's going to be one of my problem areas. So <clears throat> having said that, 
I think the board has overwhelmingly uh, agreed that this non-conforming use is not out of line for that particular piece of property and send a positive recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals in terms of the change of use for, the, for this particular piece of property. Anything else? Thank you very much. Okay. We look forward to you coming back. Our next item this evening is the town planner's report. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just want to, I know board members have received a couple of emails, but just make an announcement to all board members and members of the public who are interested um, that uh, there will be two joint council planning board workshops coming up in the month of September. The first will be on Wednesday, September 3rd, 6 p.m. here in Town Hall to review the updates uh, regarding wireless facilities, cell towers. Um, there will also be a joint council planning board workshop on Wednesday, September 17th, same time, same place, uh, to receive a presentation from Piper Shores on a proposal to amend their contract zone uh, to expand their facility. Um, so those are two upcoming workshops. That Excuse I want me, uh, what, what time did you say those were? 6 p.m. Thank you. And we will be sending out multiple reminders, Mr. Major. Thank you. <laughs> I need them. Thank you, Jay. Yep. Administrative amendment report. I do not believe we have anything to report. Uh, correspondence? Yes, uh, Corey? I did receive, and I handed on to uh, Mr. Chase here, a, a, a CD or DVD that was dropped off at my home uh, within the past few weeks that appears to be about cell towers and potential. We all receive it. Yeah. Um, you didn't get one? So I didn't pass that along to staff. Yep. I don't know if anyone else received. Oh yeah, I think we all. I think we pretty all much did. everyone got one. Um, right. And again, if there is anybody here from the public listening, uh, we ask that you certainly feel free to send information mm -hmm. that you would like the planning board to have available to them as they deliberate on items coming forth. But we also ask that you pass those along through the planning department. So. Send any information you would like this board to see through either Jay uh, Chase, our assistant planner, or Dan Bacon, our town planner, so that they can disseminate the information to the board and everybody gets the same information. So again, we encourage you to do it, but not um, otherwise than directly through the town planning department. Um, other correspondence? I would like to say that Mr. Chase did forward an email from Ms. Oglis to all of us uh, yes. about some information that's coming up. So Susan, we know that you're going to be absent during that time frame. Uh, thank you for sending us some of your concerns you. so that we can hopefully represent you well at thank that you. meeting. That would be lovely. Um, planning board comments. Yes, Susan. I'd like just to say good evening and welcome, and we're glad to see you, and we hope that uh, we can help you in any way at all. So Thank you. during these meetings, if you need to just put your hand up, don't don't hesitate. We're pretty friendly. Okay. okay. Thank you. And they're not all this short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I heard that. <laughs> um, I know that Susan is not going to be at the next meeting. Correct. Is there anybody else not going to be at the next meeting? Next Which meeting, no. I won't be at the uh, one next week. I'll be away next week for the joint meeting. I will not be at that one. All right, September 15th, I think, is the 15th date. 15th is our meeting date. I okay. think it's the 15th. Is it by this? Year? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 15th. I only ask because if we're going to be <laughs> short, it's always nice to know. So, okay, great. Perfect. I'll come back. <laughs> we hope so. I can make it. We hope we didn't scare you off tonight. No. Um, with that, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have Mr. Mazur and Mr. Second. DuPont with a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. And I show that to be unanimous and good evening. Mm -hmm.